Like every Saskatchewan town, the community of Debden sent its share of men to fight in the Second World War. But unlike every other town, every single recruit from Debden, against all odds, came back alive. When Canada went to war in 1939, there was no great wave of enthusiasm. People still remembered the loss and hardship of the First World War. Canadian men signed up reluctantly, out of a sense of duty. The men of Debt in Saskatchewan were no different. Nobody wanted to go to the war. Very good. And uh, most of us were farmers. Uh, Debden today seems to be pretty well a thriving community. Leo Bolak was born in the Debden area and has lived most of his and life here. His wife Rose the, uh, is a local girl. It's a French-speaking, staunchly Catholic community. In 1939, Debden's parish priest was Monsignor Joyel. On the eve of war, he made a promise before God and his congregation. He promised that the Holy Mary, that he would build her something if he would bring all the boys back. The Monsignor promised the parish would erect a statue once every Debden man was safely home. The congregation was instructed to pray for the soldiers' safekeeping every day. We prayed a lot for all of them to come back. Forty-six Debden men answered the call, including Leo Bolak and his brother Roland. They both wanted to be paratroopers, but ended up in the infantry. I was nervous. The first night before I got to the front line, uh, we slept in a cow pasture. And uh, I was 24 years old and it took a long time to go to sleep. And tears. Leo fought his way through France, Holland, and Germany. Right to the front line, the front, uh, in infantry, that was the, the front, the real front because those guys on the other side, they were fighting. They were fighting for real. So we had to fight for real too. It was either him or I. That was scary. Canadian soldiers distinguished themselves on the shores of Italy and the beaches of Normandy. They almost single-handedly liberated Holland. Our sailors kept supplies moving on the North Atlantic, running a gauntlet of German U-boats. Canadian fighter pilots squared off with the Luftwaffe. And RCAF bombing crews dodged anti-aircraft fire over Berlin. For six long years, the men of Debden put their lives on the line for their country. One airman from the community was shot down, but parachuted safely to the ground and was captured by the Germans. Many others had close calls. Leo Bolak was shot in the stomach. I was standing in, in the doorway, and uh, it was a hell of a slap on the side. And uh, I had the guy on the machine gun in front in the, in the woodshed. And uh, I said, you better come in, but I, because I said, uh, I think that was pretty close. So we came in, and by that time I could feel it was kind of warm and damp on my side, so I took off my belt, and there was a hole through my belt, my army belt. I looked up, and there was two little black holes about three quarters of an inch apart. The blood was just oozing out of there. At one point, Leo wasn't sure he'd pull through, wasn't sure the Debden promise would be kept. With the help of God, avec l'aide de Dieu. And I think that's how, that's how I survived. When the war ended, the Debden men returned home. 46 had left, and all 46 returned. One in 10 Canadian fighting men didn't come home. At that rate, Debden should have lost four or five. People said it was a miracle. We had either the angels, and the angel was protecting them with all the prayers from all the families. And for me, it's a, you never think I see those miracles. After all the men returned home safely, 
the Monsignor kept his promise. The parish built Our Lady of Fatima, a statue that pays tribute to the local veterans and to the miracle. And some people believe the statue still performs miracles today. I'm Bill Wazer.